Now this, get your pens ready. I've never talked about this before. A couple of you have asked me to go over it, right? And I'm not going to do a full hour breakdown because it take me an hour and a half to really explain it. But the Benner cycle is really a market predictor. So for those of you that may be doctors or nurses, you've heard this talked about in your field of study. But the Benner cycle in this, no, this is not the crystal ball, but I do use it in, in uh, association with to understand larger market cycles. So it came out of 1967 and it's one of the few studies that have been accurate after one public. So uh, Benner stated that there are tops every eight, nine, 10 years, starting around 1902. And then the cycle keeps repeating itself. So when people tell you, hey, you can't time the market, you don't know when a crash is going to happen, you don't know when a market is going to pull back, you don't know when a market is going to be soft or flat, that's not true. I'm never going to say this again outside of Dream Team and outside of Stock Club. Every book that you can find on Benner Cycles, go get it. I'll never say it again. I'll never say it again. So let's look at this. And this is for the Dow Jones. This, and ignore the middle lines. But look at the tops. So in 1902, 1910, 1919, 1929, predicted crashes, 37, 46, 56. Let's scroll to more recent times. 1991. What happened in 1991? Please put in chat for those of us that are older and how it affected the stock market. 2010, excuse me, 2000, 2010, 2018. At the bottom, you can also see when the bottoms are which are ideal times or what I define catastrophic times to buy in the market. So 1933, 1949, 1967. My brother was born in 1987 and go follow my brother's channel, please. Uh, big ass kid, B I G G with two, with two G's, uh, in 1987. What happened in 1987? Please put that in, in the chat. 2003. So it was a little bit off, but there was a soft pullback. And then in 2021, it was predicted for the Dow to then have a downward cycle. It ended up happening in 2020. But this is something that was printed in 67. Just like there are certain innovations and in that Tesla was able to uncover that he was talking about now. Or excuse me, that are in, or that are in existence now. There is a rhyme and reason to the market you should stay away from these middle areas. But if you do look at them, there will be times when the market could be flat for a while or could be a softer market. Let's look at this. So if you look at the bottoms and you compare it to the Schiller index, you can see here, this is for another index. You can see the times when we were going to bottom out 78, 85, 96, 2005. So that was right before the recession, 2012. Predicted for something to happen in 23. What could potentially happen in 2023 that could make the market potentially soft or drop? And then the tops of the market, 1927, 1945, 1965, 1981, 1999, right? 2019. So when people are telling you there's no way to know it, I'm like, that is not true the truth is most people are not reading how to get the under how to get the information to know if a stock is really undervalued or oversold or if we are in a bubble the middle lines you can see these means 2007 26 would be a mean area 1980 1989 when you go study these cycles you will then know when bottoms and tops can occur it's called the Benner cycle let's look at one last one 87, 2003, 2021. So some were saying 2019, some were saying 21, some were saying 23. That is a zone in which you need to prepare. Tops 2018, 27. And if we bottom out in 23, we may have a four year period. Great. And then we may see some exuberance in 2027 as we did in 2007. And then maybe a flat or softer market around 2029. Trust me, when people are planning for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, they're not just looking at a short term horizon. So when you, some of you are like, hey, this tech boom won't last for a long time. I'm like, you ain't been investing in two years to deserve the right to say that shit. How? Do as you please. But technology is not going anywhere. And then that's a great quote. When he compared them and saw.
an effect sequence of a larger cycle of 18, 20, 16 years and a small cycle of nine, 10, eight years. These cycles depicted reactions and depressions. According to Benner, this was no chart with no charting. So there was no Robin Hood. He couldn't listen to us. He couldn't listen to Kramer. This is before all this technology existed. And this is why I give people like him and Jesse Livermore credit and Paul Tudor Jones credit because they did it when you had to graph everything out. There was a certain hunger that they had for this information that people don't have to have today. According to Benner, these were cast iron rules and he referred to them as God in prices. This also works for farming. It also works for birthing rate. It also helps to understand when an economy or a country will be in a boom cycle and or a bust cycle. But you don't get this damn information arguing. You get it through reading and learning.